there's a door back there in that room. And if I go, it won't be you. Like, people won't see me like they did. Not anymore, because I've got that big, giant paper up. <laughs> You've washed that out, huh? Greg says, put your hat up, Emily. We can't see your eyes. <laughs> she just did that with her middle finger, Greg. <laughs> I'll be looking up when I speak. How about that? All right. If I have to take this, you know what? If I have to take my hat off, he has to take his no, hat off. No, he said just put it up so they can see you. Because of the topic that we're talking Thanks, about? Thanks, feminists. You know what? All right. Mine is bigger. I'm having a messy hair day. <laughs> He's blowing kisses at you. Oh, see. Yeah, Emily doesn't wear hats very often. Yeah. Um, so the fact that she's wearing one, and I think it's hot myself when she wears a hat. I just went on a tirade. I apologize. But I was looking at my phone for stuff to say to, like, get your guys' titties in a waddle. All right, so I guess we are are live. I just want to make sure everybody can hear us very well. So test, let me know test. if y'all can hear us here on the Thumbs shiv. up. Here, let's start with, here's what we can do. I'll play, I think this is a funny clip from Tucker Carlson. He's talking about Chris Hayes, who is an MSNBC really guy. What? Can I hear it too? Yeah, you'll be able to okay. hear it. Um, because he here and uh, you know who Chris Hayes is, Emily. Are you gonna have to mansplain it to me? I, I think so. Okay, mansplain away. What? Well, I, I just want you to see. This is Chris Hayes. Is he the? I don't want to say. You don't have to really know who he is. I just want you to see who he is. Okay, I see who he is. Yeah, he's blurry, but I see. Yeah, because this is who Tucker Carlson is talking. So that's what I wanted to. That's what I wanted to bring up before. Okay, okay so uh, this is. I, I love this because this is what <laughs> Tucker calls Chris Hayes. Chris Hayes is what every man would be if feminists ever achieved absolute power in this country. Apologetic, bespectacled, and deeply, deeply concerned about global warming and the patriarchal systems that cause it. On Friday, Hayes hosted a town hall event on MSNBC with Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It was designed to promote her Green New Deal. This apparently seemed like a wise idea to executives over at NBC. I just think it's funny that he's comparing. So the rest of it doesn't matter. Okay. But uh, I just think it's funny because he's calling... The very same news outlet very that's effeminate, been two... The very same news... This very effeminate MSNBC host, what a feminist would look like. This is what masculinity would look like, would be Chris Hayes. So, so, tell me about feminism. Well, what's the deal? Why do women, why do women think they're men? Okay, you can't do that. You can't say all feminists think that they're men. And what would you say? Would you say I'm a feminist? Do you say that I? What do? What? I think in our relationship, are we equal? Am I above? Am I below? What's the deal going on there? We're not equal in some ways. You are above me, and in some ways, I'm above you. It just depends on what it is. I'm not talking I, about bed. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking. Okay. I'm talking about outside the bed. <laughs> so. I'm saying that men and women are just simply not okay, equal. Okay, but no. But here's the, as, no. Far as, as far as parenting and as far as this relationship, yeah, neither one of us is better than the other. I'm not saying better. I am saying, and I, don't get me wrong, people. I don't want to get all this hate from his peeps, okay? I get enough of that. 
I, I'm just saying for the sake of the conversation, as far as feminist, the feminist movement goes, where would you put me at on the scale? I don't think you're a modern, I don't think you're a modern feminist. I think you are a feminist in the sense that you're a strong woman, but you don't believe that society needs to cater to you necessarily or that you're somehow oppressed. Okay. But I think in, as a as a woman, I think you believe that there is a a proper role and function of women and a proper function and role of men, and that you should be just as respected as men should, but that you're not like society doesn't necessarily target you, and women aren't any more oppressed than what they allow themselves to be. Does that make sense? I don't see you as a modern. Do you third pick wave up your feminist. dirty clothes? What's that? Do you pick up your dirty clothes? Sometimes. Do you ever pick up my dirty clothes? People need to be able to hear you. I spoke right into the mic. Um. So, yeah, sometimes I pick up my dirty clothes. To, <laughs> and sometimes, but not very often, if I, if I get to them before you do, yes, I will pick up your dirty clothes. But it's very rare. What's that? So, no, I'm just... Well, are you a feminist or not? Okay. So, and what do you think about modern day feminism? I believe modern day feminism is crap, to be honest with you. I mean, I I understand where women want to be out of the oh, I'm not even using the right word. The olden day society roles of and they're and traditional. They're traditional, yeah. Um, and because in I hate using this phrase, in this day and age, um, I think more is expected of women. Um, Not necessarily from men, but I think things that they put on themselves, and I think just because of how, I want to say in terms of money, maybe, um, jobs, uh, cost of living, and I think maybe that's our own fault because we expect much on ourselves as far as what we want in life, I guess. Um, and also less women are having kids, less women are getting married, less women are staying married. And so it's, it's all that, that whole life has just changed now to where women staying in a traditional role of marriage has just changed, period. Do you think that the, the traditional role of women was an oppressive role or was it just a natural role? I think it. I want to say maybe it was natural to a point, but maybe it depended on who you were married to. Because if you were married to a man who was suppressive, then you were in a suppressive role. If you were married to a man who allowed you to, you know... Be yourself. Be yourself and be free, then you probably had a completely different outlook on life. I couldn't imagine what it was like in, um, you know, trying to get women the right to vote you know if you were married to a man who got his paycheck and went out and drank it away and his family just stayed you know starved basically and the woman had to cook clean do everything and she had to be the one to figure out how to make it all work while her husband just worked drank worked drank worked drank um so to say now in the 21st century I'm trying to make sure I'm not saying any spoof words to embarrass you. Um, to say well, now, you can say anything. I, I think people expect just as much shock and awe from you as they <laughs> do from me. Shh, don't give my secret away. To say now, though, um, you lost my train of thought. Okay, yeah. To say now, most women, at least in the Western civilization, are not fighting those kind of battles. And I know people are going to be like, are you serious? They're not fighting those battles? You know, for the most part, they're not. Um, It's like jumping right in. And when you get into um, talking about abortion, uh, I saw someone make a comment one time where she said, you know, we're in the 21st century. Women, birth control has been around for I don't know how long. And to keep saying you know, you're using abortion as birth control, it's just not responsible. There are so many options out there for birth control. 21st century, it's been around. Get out there, be responsible. Um, So I think in America, women, 
at least, yeah, in America, they, we have so much out there for knowledge to be used in a good way that I don't think the modern day feminist movement is used, or at least it's not portrayed in a way that is appealing to most women, I think. Unless they're out to, I don't know, the, the gotcha kind of thing of let's let's down with the man kind of thing. So So I was just looking up because well let me let me ask you this then. Do you think that there is a difference between and, and by the way, do you want to let people call and ask a question? Are we gonna screen them? You have to talk into the mic. All right. Are we gonna screen them? They probably won't be screened, but I can hang up on them. <laughs> um, maybe we'll see. We'll All see. All right. How well, eight six six eight nine five six four four two is the number only while we're live. Well, hold on. Let me. Can I say one quote too? Yeah. That, okay. There was another quote, and it it came from a really weird article that I read a couple of days ago or today or something. I don't know. Um, and it was actually talking about shaving, about how one in four women nowadays prefer not to shave anywhere um, under their arms legs bikini wherever and one of the ladies who quoted she just said you know I believe that uh, being a feminist is just having the the choice of not being able to force your uh, your decision on someone else about shaving because you have the the extreme feminist who says you need to be free, and if you're not, then you're not a feminist. And then you have the other women that are just, you know, I want to be nice, neat, and tidy, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's gross to to have hair everywhere. And anyway, and I just thought that quote was kind of nice where, yeah, let's just not put any standards on anyone and say, well, if you don't choose this way, you're not a feminist. Well, and I think it's interesting because I, I, I think most men – believe women should be able to be whatever i mean even the sexist if if a woman doesn't want to shave her pits in other areas <laughs> then a woman doesn't have to shave her pits in other areas just don't expect a man to be up in that that's all i'm saying because men don't find that attractive it's like this new wave feminism that they're trying to well and some men though don't care like they just it, well and they some look men at don't and, and they and just so don't care th- that those one or two people those one or two men who probably couldn't get a woman any other way anyway, except for a bushy woman, would <laughs> let them fight over the feminists. They can have them. But just because they don't shave doesn't make them a feminist, though. Well, it doesn't. But it does definitely. It's I think, just their option I think not most to men would shave. find it's just a way, it's just an attractive thing, I think. I, I just think. Yeah, it's and what that's your taste. And like my preference is to shave my armpits. Yeah. And we probably wouldn't be married if you didn't. <laughs> just, just, you know. That probably wouldn't have happened. The, the minute that, uh, anyway, it's kind of like a woman that's got a penis. I mean, the minute I saw the penis, I'd probably be turned off. That wouldn't be a woman, sorry. It wouldn't be. It would not be a woman. Um, so Terry says hi. Hi. Um, but it's also like the, the women who are trying to sort of glorify obesity as if obesity is somehow a good thing that people are supposed to be proud of. Now, people shouldn't be treated differently because of that. But a woman should not be proud of the fact that she's and I, obese. Okay, so I think I know what you're talking about. Um, there was a new ad by Nike where they had the plus size model. And I I think, I don't want to say you're say, seeing it in a different way than I am. As someone who is into fitness, I see it, I because I, I feel the same way where we need to make sure that people are healthy and they're you're not saying, hey, it's okay to be overweight and unhealthy, but we want to say, you know what, if you want to change your lifestyle, look, wear what you want to wear and go work out. Start this new lifestyle and don't be afraid of it because right. there are so many people out there that have fears, that have are afraid to step into that world and just don't do it. It's like women in the gym and lifting weights. A lot of women won't go into that section because they, they're just afraid to. And all the time we're telling people, no, just – no one cares what you're doing over there in the weight mm-hmm. section. They're actually, most people when they lift weights, they are looking at themselves as opposed to looking at that person over there or that person over there. They're worried about their, their own muscles that they're gaining. And so if there's a mirror in front of them, they're not looking at you bending over. They're looking at themselves <laughs> getting pumped and all that. So, and I think that's what Nike was trying to convey. Not that, hey, 
you know, it's, it's okay to be, um, unhealthy and, and overweight and let's, you know, let's glorify this. That's that I don't think that's what they were trying to do at all with their ad. And I, I think it's, I think it's great to, um, encourage people who are in that lifestyle to want to change to another lifestyle. It's, it's, I, I, I liked it. So, so let's try, let's try a phone call Oh gosh. and see how this works and whether or not we're making a mistake. Okay. So we do have a, a caller. And before I, before I go to the caller, uh, 357 says, as a society, we historically suppressed women's rights. But with that said, we have changed that and fought for women's rights. Yeah. Let's just get back to human rights. I completely agree. Yes. Let's just all be let's decent not live to each in the other. Past. Let's not forget that we're, we're all human. Let's just be human to each other. Yeah. So who's on the line? Hey, you got old and slow out here in South Carolina. Well, hello, South Carolina. Wow. You know, I learned something about North Carolina that I know you're you're not North Carolina, but you said Carolina, so it's you know to a Texan, it's just Two not Texas. States. Yeah, but I did you know that in Texas or in North Carolina, you have to get permission from your sheriff every time you buy a gun. Yeah, they have to have a permit up there just to do anything. Yeah, I did not know that. That was uh, anyway. Sorry about that. Go ahead, man. What's your what's on your mind? Uh, well, I know it used to be in the old days. Parents used to raise their daughters to be attractive to a man so that they could find a man to provide for them. And women were really dependent on that back in the older days, even just a couple generations back, like my grandparents, probably your grandparents, or great-grandmother was raised the same way. And now it's gotten to where I know, like my daughter, she's 30 now, or 32, but I raised her to where she can be in a position where she doesn't have to rely on a man to provide for her. She's got to be able to take care of herself. Yeah. That way she's not dependent or get, doesn't have to worry about being stuck in a bad position because a lot of women in the old days, they put up with abuse because they had nowhere else to go and don't way to provide for themselves. But with the modern day feminism, it seems like they've gone to the extremes now, instead of just saying, Hey, I want to be able to take care of myself or I'm capable of being, taking care of myself, they think that everybody owes them everything. And if you admit that men are better at certain things, like being physically stronger or maybe able to be a little more dominant when it comes to self-defense or protection, they act like that's a bad thing and you shouldn't point out those differences. But it's just genetically there are differences. And and I would also say that back in those days – well, I mean, heck, even in my day and even today, that's how we raise our kids. You know, you want your you want your daughters to be attractive to someone else's sons and you want your sons to be attracted to someone else's daughters. And historically, you're right, because it is whether 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 this is politically correct to say or not, it's biblical. The job of the man is to provide for the family. But can I also and add the, that we didn't raise them to be like that was the sole purpose right. of their and exactly we encourage them to go to college get an education and to be depend, or yeah, independent independent upon themselves and, yeah, yeah. And, and it's important that men and women are raised to be independent but it, there's also nothing wrong with the idea that a woman is better suited i guess is a better way to put it a woman is better suited to raising a family than a man except a gay man because they're basically like a woman anyway but a, a man is is better suited to providing for the family. That's why we're built the way we are. We're built the way we are because we are supposed to toil and we are supposed to work through life to provide for our offspring and to provide uh, food for our family. I mean, this goes back to the caveman days where we had to hunt for our own food. We were built to go running out and doing that. Can women do that? Yes. Can men raise uh, children? Yes. But... The natural roles between it's 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 no different than in society. I mean, look at look at penguins. The roles are somewhat reversed. I mean, the the women go out and get the food. The men sit there and hatch the egg. Well, you know, and also I I don't think there's anything wrong in a marriage for those roles to be reversed as well because sometimes a woman is offered the better job and whatever. Yeah, but also my, getting back in to my the, situation. In my situation, my wife went to college and she has a master's degree and everything else. And she's always been able to find steady year-round type work. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, when we first got married, I did a lot of construction type work, seasonal jobs. And then I got into wildland firefighting, which was seasonal, three, four months a year. So it made sense for us as a partnership. Everything worked out better where she worked year round, and I stayed home, watched the kids, made sure they got off to school and did their homework and everything like that. And I basically raised them as the full time parent at home. And then in the summertime, when fire season started, I'd take off and go make as much money in three months as she made the rest of the year. But it worked out as a partnership, being able to just work together on what works for you as a family unit. Yeah. And getting back to your other, the other part of what you mentioned is I think part of that is just the, the entitlement um, of a lot of people that they just think that they're entitled to everything. You know, oh, well, my, my progenitors were suppressed, and so now I'm entitled to this, or, you know, well, my mom had a cell phone growing up so you know when I started kindergarten I get a cell phone kind of it's kind of that mentality of everything is owed to them and just depending on I mean pick a topic and that's I I just think that's just one of those almost a sign of our times and generation kind of thing you know and it's it's in feminism uh, feminist work it's in I mean even in politics like you know as far as like capitalist and free market they're like okay well we feel like it hasn't worked now so let's move on to something else and I mean those kids just don't even know because they they've just lived in a I don't want to say a perfect you know but they just don't they want everything to be free for them and so it's well they want to be catered to yes not not well, treated equally these, they want to be tra- catered to yes you see all these female uh, the liberal politicians right now the women will get up and talk down about it you know, if you're a white male, you have nothing to say and they don't want to hear it. Yet, they'll go on and on and on talking down about men. And the second a man calls them on it or calls them on something they say that's wrong, all of a sudden they're being sexist. You know, and listening to them, and I, you can ask my husband too, I, I honestly cannot stand listening to them when they just go off. Because I, just as a woman, I mean, just even as a person... They, they honestly disgust me, and it turns me off to hear their viewpoint, which is just more of, of them just, blah, blah, blah. I mean, they just, that's just what it sounds like. It, it, they have no point. They have no purpose. I mean, what, what do they really want to say? You know, it, they're not getting anything across other than hate, 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 um, put you down, put you down, put you down. And it just, I don't understand how any woman wants to hear that vitriol all the time. I mean, if I were in a yeah. marriage and we did that all the time, it would just be like, you know, let's let's not be here anymore. Let's go away from each other. Forever. So here's, <laughs> uh, did you have any other comments there before we move on? Uh, other than like, um, when it comes to politics, you hear all the time the left always trying to say Hillary Clinton lost because she was a woman Mm-mm. and blaming it on the gender card thing. And it wasn't that she was a woman. It was because she was a bad candidate. She was corrupt. Most of the population knew it. And there's a moral group in this country that says, you know, we know what she's about and we can't vote for that. So that's why she lost in the center of the country, in the flyover country, the flyover states. And other than that, uh, CJ, I've been watching your show for a long time, and thanks for all you do trying to push for the Second Amendment. And good luck with everything you got going on there in Texas. Hey, appreciate it Thank so much. Thank you for your call. Yeah, thanks for calling in and contributing. Appreciate it. And good luck over there in South Carolina. Uh, yep. We got to get you guys well, open carry. Well, You're one get... of the last holdouts over there. Yeah, I know they keep on saying they got a bill in the House that they're looking at, but they never vote on it. So now, now, and, and just I know we're talking about feminism. I just have a quick question: Are y'all able to carry rifles openly? No, there's no open carry in South Carolina. You can carry a handgun in your vehicle in the glove box or in a center console legally. Okay. If you have a concealed carry permit, then obviously you can carry it on your body or underneath your seat. But it can't be out in the open. Yeah, and and so, because like in Florida, Florida's not an open carry state either, but they can carry if they're hunting, fishing, or on their way to those things. Is that is that similar, or is it just no? You, you can your rifle in your car when you're going hunting and, and you can carry while you're going to hunt and fish okay mainly hunting 
I don't know about fishing, but I know when you're hunting, you can. You have to have your valid hunting license on you with your tags for whatever season, for whatever game you're hunting for. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. And uh, good luck to you guys over there. We follow you closely, and good luck to you. Thanks a lot. All right. And getting to the back to the political thing, and he he mentioned the Hillary Clinton and the feminist thing. I would have voted for a decent woman. I would vote for Condoleezza Rice. I would have voted for, uh, geez, the Alaska governor. She was vice. Palin. Yeah. I, I would have voted for Palin. Uh, there there are many, many you know, women. I'd vote for you for president. Thank you. You would clean this place up. As, okay, everyone can agree that Hillary. I'd vote for Terry. Man, can you imagine Terry as president? She'd be kicking everyone's two together. ass. We, we, oh, man, put her in football together? Yeah. And, oh, no, that's, okay, wrong person, sorry. Um. Okay, when Hillary lost... And you, everyone heard about all the temper tantrums that she threw. I mean, that kind of cracked me up. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, I throw temper tantrums. It's over something big that really pisses me off. But anyway, so, and she was like, it's because I'm a woman. You know, if you're going to use the woman card, use it for something legitimate. The numbers were in. If people didn't want her in there, she's just, I just look at her as a vile woman. I mean, she lied. She did so many disgusting things to people. And it had nothing to do with Trump. She did all those things before Trump even came into the picture. And do you think that oh. feminism is actually self defeating? That when someone like Hillary Clinton or uh, AOC or anyone that's, uh, let's even go to Hollywood, claims that they lost because they were a woman or. That this happened because they were a woman, or this didn't happen because they were a woman. Does that set women back because it? Yeah, it makes them sound it does. like they're making it's excuses. Like, cry me a river already, because okay, first okay, you have Hillary who's just you can she she did that she did everything on her own. She lost on her own. Okay, you bring AOC in the picture. I mean, she won her her election. Gay for her as a woman. Good, you know. But she's an idiot on her own that when she pull, pulls out that woman card, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I mean, I think she is, right? And, and then when you complain, when when guys, so I, I go after AOC just like I go after Eric Swalwell. Yeah. Eric Swalwell's a white man. She's a, I don't, I guess she's a Hispanic female. And I go after them the exact same. But when you go and feel so about stuff like that. It's like, it, it undermines any argument I feel because it's not, it's like for when you talk about abortion, when they're like, Oh, pro-lifers, you know, they can't make a decision anyway. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, is they forget that being pro-life is a choice in itself. Okay. So when you say for, Going after a woman, oh, you're just doing this because I'm a woman. Actually, no, I'm an intelligent being on my own, and I can think. What, are they laughing at me? Okay. <laughs> no, Terry said, ha-ha, me and Emily would have this country in tip-top shape. Y'all think you're tired of hearing impeach Trump? Imagine two of us in charge. <laughs> True. But um, so when they sit there and piss and moan about, oh, you're only doing this because I'm a woman. So? Suck it up, Buttercup? Pretty much. And, I mean, people are hating on Trump because he's a man, and you know I hated on him for a while. That whole grab him by the pussy thing, oh, my gosh. I That set me off like you would not believe. And he, as a man, like, gives me the creepy heebie-jeebies. Like, in other words, you would not want to be in a no, an elevator with Trump by himself. No, and he doesn't creep me out, though, as much as Uncle Joe does because you can at least <laughs> see him touch people like little kids, and you're like, Get away from my daughters, you know. But these women are setting themselves up. You know, I have much more respect for. Um, but as a president or and politically, putting the man aside, what do you think of Trump? Obviously, because okay, uh, you're like me. I can't, yeah. I don't, I don't think Trump's a good person I, I necessarily. I don't think he's a moral person. Yeah. But he's a great president. As a Second Amendment person, obviously we have our issues. As far as the economy, I think he's doing a great job. And I, I feel like people, they do him a, a severe injustice by not looking at the economy. It's like, oh, you know, 
Mexico, the wall. That's what we're going to look at. But forget the economy over here when that's actually the greatest thing for our nation over here. But, oh, the wall. Let's talk about the wall. Yeah. This, this is all we're going to talk about. Oh, and Twitter. Oh, he tweeted. Okay, he's he was a big tweeter before. I mean, yeah, that that's what irritates me. I mean, it's like when I nag you and you're like, oh, I did this good thing. And I'm like, so? <laughs> she does. She does. Anytime my head starts growing even just a micrometer. She's yeah. there. She's there to deflate it. I'm like, it doesn't make up for you not putting your crap away, you know? Like, oh, you did the dishes. The kids could have done that. You know, it's like that. It's like, yeah, it's like when I do that. So, okay. So let's go to feminism and things like uh, arguments that equate feminism with things like abortion. So you're a woman. I'm not allowed to have an opinion. Do you believe... Am I a woman? Do you believe that... Men can have opinions on women's issues and women can have opinions on men's issues. Yes. And I don't think it's fair that women put those selective um, criteria on each of those issues, making it very unfair for anyone to make those kind of choices at all. Well, that was easy. Did that actually make sense? It did. <laughs> it's just so. throwing big words out there. No, I'm just kidding. That was easy. I had to think about that for a second. All right. But well, yeah. um, let's see how long we've been going on here. So I don't see a timer. But anything else related to that? I mean, do that? we want to dig into the abortion issue? Do you guys yeah, want to dig into that? Let, let's dig into that because that's a big issue right now. Okay. And the biggest, the biggest argument in feminism is my body, my choice. Mm -hmm. And Can I just say when I hear the words women get, pre or get pregnant, that the men – are the only reason women get pregnant, I just want to smack them. Like, well, yes, I understand, yes, you can only, okay. And let's, we're not talking about rape or incest. We're not talking about that. We're talking about consensual sex. And if they, when they say, oh, I only got pregnant because the man. Can we stop? Because then you're just saying that women are stupid and they didn't know what was happening. They didn't know what was what could have happened. They didn't know they could get pregnant when I'm I want to be I, I'm actually trying not to talk dumb and mansplain for women out there. <laughs> okay, of what happens when a man finishes, that there's how many millions of sperm <laughs> and how few get to the egg, but there's, you know, at least ten or so, maybe more probably. I can't remember the amount, it's like twenty, whatever, that actually get to the egg. One of them or two of them or three of them can fertilize it all at once. You are smart enough to, or dumb enough to have sex. You should be educated enough to know what happens when you have sex. Yeah. That, that irritates me when they're like, oh, it's the man's fault we got pregnant. No, it's your own stupid self fault. That was a woman saying that. It more, more irritates of a woman, me. More of a woman than any feminist out there. It irritates me to no end. And and surprisingly, CJ and I differ a little bit on abortion, and, and we'll probably get some hate for this too. But um, CJ is very, very anti, and I am anti. I am pro-life. But we I also know that when you take away the facilities, women are going to have it done anyhow. And I would rather women have the proper clean facilities, not Planned Parenthood, because they, I don't think it should be government funded. Well, they push it. They profit yes. off of it. So and they want, yeah. they want abortions. They're, and I don't, they're not want, there to try I don't want body parts being sold. Yeah. I don't want any of that. If it's going to happen, I would rather women have a safe place to do it as opposed to not. And I know that's horrible to say, but like I said, if we know it's going to happen, please keep these women safe from their own follies is what is all I'm saying. So so let's let's go with that because you said okay. if it's if it's gonna happen. So what if the father doesn't want it to happen? I don't think the father's decision should be taken out of the equation. Cause that and that's that's kind of what I and wrote. And that's where the whole my body, my uterus, my choice. If I okay, that's fine then. You okay, then same thing goes if you're gonna be on that platform. If someone decides you have to keep it 
the same for everyone all across the board. If someone keeps their baby and if the dad decides, oh, my choice, my sperm, my whatever, I don't want to pay child support. I then, okay, the women started it. It's going to piss people off. They started this argument. Then don't pay child support. It's their choice too. And, and that's, I think, the biggest thing because women talk about uh, the feminists, uh, not the women, but the feminists talk yes. about equal rights and equal pay and all that. And, and I, I brought up, so these are the top 10 male dominated occupations. They are metal worker, central heating installer, so AC heating, car mechanic, construction carpenter, electrician, electrical technician, a lorry driver. Is this a British thing? I don't know. Gonna... <laughs> oh, you know what? This is a New Zealand thing. No wonder. Okay. But the bottom line is, because I looked at several different places, and where women as a percentage are higher in occupations, it's uh, medical secretary, chemist assistant, so they're not becoming chemists necessarily, mm -hmm. executive secretaries, secretaries, uh, home helpers, uh, care attendant of sick people, daycare attendants, nurses, teachers. And for the most part, those aren't, if you look, they're not super high paying jobs because of the profession. I, I guarantee you that a female secretary is probably making about as much as a male secretary, just like a male teacher is making as much as a female teacher, which isn't as much as, for example, a carpenter is probably making. Mm -hmm. But I get I bet you a male carpenter and a female carpenter are probably making the same thing. Uh, there are some, you know, it's funny that that the professions that complain and whine about this the most, i.e. Hollywood, that complain about this income disparity, um, and even even the 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 politicians, they're the ones that are the most guilty of this. Because look at how many how many twenty million plus dollar actresses are there versus 20 million plus actors. And I would say that the reason for that is because generally those $20 million per movie actors are like action actors. And they're the they're the ones that are out there getting blown up, shooting, doing manly stuff, you know? And that's <laughs> what people go to a movie to see. But then you've got your, the high-paid women actresses are the ones that they make the little sappy love what the, the is Julia Roberts still the highest paid actress? I mean, she hasn't really put out a really decent movie in a while, has she? Is she still the highest paid? I'm not sure. Let's see. The uh, no, Scarlett Johansson right now. Okay, now that I okay, that makes better sense than I would. I I could probably agree with that. She's so it's uh, a yeah. Scarlett Johansson, Angelina Jolie, Jennifer Aniston, Jennifer Lawrence, Reese Witherspoon, Mila really? Kunis, Julia Roberts, and Kate Blanchett. So literally, if you want to be a high paid actress, you just got to be hot. That's that's what I see. That was a very sexist remark. <laughs> so if you're ugly, don't expect to get paid more. Now let's go to the highest paid actors. Let's see. The now, Rock. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you if these people are hot or not. Okay. Um, and and maybe that's why men are paid. Only if the Thor is on there. Oh, he better be on here. I see Where the rock. Why was it easy to find the women's list? Okay, George okay, Clooney. No, I cannot see. He, no. How is George Clooney the highest paid? He, when Weiner? was the last time he made a movie? He, he's actually, I, I don't know if he's so much the highest paid actor as he is because he directs a lot of films. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you got the rock? I believe that. I agree with and that. And do you think he's sexy? Yeah, I mean. I think he's sexy. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I do him, but yeah, he's, <laughs> he's good looking. Robert Downey Jr.? No. Now, try and look at it objectively, though. I mean, I've never been attracted to it. Even when I was younger and he was younger, no. Oh, there's your yes. man. Chris Hemsworth. No, the Thor. Okay, the Thor. The, the Thor. Doesn't right, matter so, what movie he's in, I will watch it. Yes, that's... So he's sexy. Yes. No. Oh, Jackie Chan? But really? You know what? He does He does a lot of his own stunts, too, and he's done a lot of action flicks that we don't necessarily watch. Will Smith? I think he's sexy. Um. Yeah, I think he's weird. He's so weird. So he's not attractive to me. Uh, I have no idea who Akshay Kumar is. I've never okay, heard of that yeah. guy. Adam Sandler, you know he's sexy. Okay, he's funny in a dad sort of way. That Chris Evans? Eh, i not into him. I don't know who Salman Khan is. No. All right, anyway. Okay, so, there we go. So generally, if you're going to be a high-paid actor or actress, you've kind of got to be sexy. Yeah. 
Okay, a 1980s Robert Downey. That was the question no, in the chat room. No, no. I just was never into him. Even as a younger teen, and actually he was a... Middle school was when he became, like, a big thing, I think. Even elementary school. Yeah, I was a little kid in the 80s, so no, I was never into him. So the thing is that yeah. even in Hollywood where... I think those men, were his drug days, too. Because so I think like, George Clooney was, like, $239 million was his number. Mm-hmm. And the high, uh, Scarlett Johansson was $41 million. So, I mean, Hollywood itself, the biggest complainer about... So why is that? Why? I mean, I know why. Okay, wait. It's, what were we initially talking? We were, we were at talking hot about. Men for a little well, bit, we were talking so about got, the ooh. the how women are paid less than men. Okay. And I now, brought up that Hollywood is a, the, one of the biggest complainers about this. Yeah. So we brought up the highest paid actor and actresses, and, and the highest distracted. paid actor is two thirty nine, and the highest paid actress is forty one. Okay. Who who was the highest? George paid actor Clooney. Now? Okay. Paid movies. We can just go to as far we can just as go to the, the Rock Avengers. Okay, but that's that's fair to say. Yeah, but that's if you're comparing the top highest one of George Clooney against Scarlett Johansson, I would say no because, like I said, she's she's been in the Avengers and yeah, compared to George Clooney, I don't think that is exactly. I, I don't fair. either. So, but yet that's maybe that isn't is. the best example. <laughs> but. But against The Rock, right. I would say that's because he's he he owns I think his own production company. He has his own and George Clooney line. does a lot more than just acting too. Yeah, as he did, well. like, and he I don't think Scarlett directing. Johansson does all that other stuff. Yeah, so it is. Oh, but she's a mom. Yeah, there you go. All yeah. right, let's try this next call here. So, uh, what what you got to say? Who's on the line? Are you there? All right. Oh. <laughs> Maybe they forgot. Someone just rickrolled us. <laughs> Is that what that was? <laughs> That's what that was. We just got rickrolled. I wouldn't have noticed it until you pointed it out. See, generation gap, you guys. Like, it's just 80s music to me. But so, yeah, so okay, so getting back to, we were talking about abortion. Well, Mr. Tedious says, oh. uh, y'all on some dumb shit. Trump is a racist, bottom line. Oh, cry me a river already. So what? What has he done that's racist? <laughs> yeah, what has he done? So, hey, uh, Mr. Tedious, we got the call-in number in the description. Let's mm-hmm. talk about it. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, no, we were just, we were talking about abortion. And then we got on to the whole line of, like, movie stars. And I don't well, really yeah, know because, before that. Well, yeah, because the abortion went to parental rights and, yeah. and things like that. So, uh, I, I think it's gotten to a point where it's not really about equality. It's actually about superiority. And... It's about women wanting, you know, because I don't see these feminists demanding that women be added to the draft. Yeah. That they be that they be forced to sign up for selective service. Like our two daughters didn't have to do that. But Chris did. Yeah. Our son. Uh, you didn't have to sign up. No. I did. You don't see women demanding equal protection of fathers in court. And, yeah. and the courts are severely stacked against fathers. Yeah, and even the nonprofit organizations that help fathers in court are very small and very unwidely known. So. Yeah. All right, let's try this uh, one more time here. Uh, who's on the line? Uh, I'm the Bama guy, three three four, calling in from Alabama, sir. How y'all doing? Hey, doing pretty doing, well. Man? How's it going? So we've had we've had South Carolina, mm-hmm. now we got Alabama. Well, yep. we were rickrolled too. And we were rickrolled from somewhere. <laughs> so what's on your mind about this? Well, I think men and women should both be paid equally. You know, that's just my thing. Mm-hmm. For the same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the same thing, absolutely. I, I, I don't, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I think the problem is, is what, what, what the feminists are doing is they're taking the average incomes of men and the average incomes of women, and they're trying to say, wait a minute, men are making more money. But the incomes and the, the professions that men are in are generally in higher grossing professions than women. Even when you look at CEOs, the, the men CEOs are CEOs of bigger companies. But yet women think that even though they're a CEO of a smaller company, they should get paid just as much as a CEO of a big company. Does that yeah, make sense? I, I mean, it, to me, you know, they should both be paid equally because it's just right. Because... Ain't no one person higher than the other. You know, they're both equal, you know, ever since the Bible, you know. Right. Well, 
but are are men and women equal? Yes, because you know in the Bible, you know, uh, women came from the rib of man. <clears throat> yeah, but if we were equal, shouldn't we be able to compete equally? Yes, it should be fair for everybody. Not just but but can women run as fast? Can the fastest woman run as fast as the fastest man? Well, I don't know about that now. <laughs> can mm-hmm. men can men have children? Well, no, because they, men, women were designed to have children, not men. <laughs> right. I mean, and so when we when we talk about equality, obviously we mean of opportunity, mm-hmm. I think, because men and women, and I'm not saying one's better than the other. That's what we were talking about earlier in this yeah. podcast is that we each have different strengths and we each have different different weaknesses. I'll tell you right now, every probably every woman in America is a better mother than I will ever be. And I don't mean that in a sexist way. I mean... If I had to raise my kids, they'd probably be in prison already because they'd be so screwed up because I'm just not a nurturing. And Emily can agree to this. I'm I'm not exactly a really nurturing kind of guy. I'm a very matter of fact kind of guy. And I don't like that, but that's just the way I am. And I think most men, most men are not as nurturing as most women are. And most women aren't as physically active in the sense of being aggressive as most men are. Well, some are and some ain't. That's yeah, all yeah, yeah. I can say about that. I'm only speaking in generalities. I'm, and, and there there are there are many women who are much more fit and can do much more than I can. Mm-hmm. And there are some men that are probably better mothers than some women. Mm-hmm. So I'm only speaking in generalities. But as far as employment goes, if, if you have a secretary position or a teacher position or a mechanic position, that that position should be paid the exact same. I definitely agree with you. But um, the, the problem is that we don't focus on is that women tend to be attracted to different types of professions and those types of professions, except for maybe nurses don't pay as well as the types of professions that men are attracted to. And I think that's because service oriented jobs, which is what women are generally attracted to, uh, don't pay as well as manual labor centric jobs, which men are attracted to. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Well, sir, I mean, I believe it should be equal for every every gender. One shouldn't be higher than the other. I mean, yeah. you know, that's just yeah. the way I believe and was raised to believe. So. No, we're, we, we're, we are in complete agreement about that. What we're talking about is the, the feminists who um, uh, are, are just taking it to the a The way whole, they're portraying it. The way that exactly they're portraying fair. it. Yeah, that's the better way. The way that they're portraying it because what they're doing is they're taking apples and oranges and saying, look, this apple makes this much, but this orange makes this much, this much. Well, that apple is only cleaning rooms at a hotel, and that orange is running a multi-billion dollar company, Mm. or vice versa. So, yeah, Yeah. I I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I just, I I mean, I was raised on the Bible, sir, so you you understand where I'm coming from. I, I, uh, my, I would actually even say, in some respects, that my wife is more equal than I am because it's my job from a biblical perspective to protect her and my kids. Yeah. And and therefore I would give my life for her, which would mean her life is more important than mine is. And therefore there's that inequality. But I you know that that's more philosophic, I think. Uh, yes, sir. I understand. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. You're welcome, sir. Have a good day. You, you too. Man. And uh, Mr. Tedious still hasn't called in to, I mean, he, he wants to type. Darn it. He wants to type, but, I mean, come on, let's stop typing and call in. Let's discuss it. We, we can't discuss stuff by, by simply typing stuff. I'm not going so, to sit there and type back and forth. I was uh, He called an entire continent a shithole because that entire continent is a shithole. Where, cuss it like- where in Africa, where, where no, in Africa can't. is beautiful? South Africa is. Well, South Africa and parts of the Nile, I think. Yeah. But for generally as a continent. Is Morocco a part of Africa? I don't even think that's a very cool place. I mean, it's Some parts nifty, it. but the what what great country is in Africa that, that is making progress in the world? Since the invention of algebra, what has the African continent given to the world? Gold? West Nile. The West Nile virus? Yeah. Ebola? Ebola? <laughs> I mean, um, so that's truth. Does that make me a racist? Because I, I don't care if that continent was full of white people, which there's plenty of white people there. 
So it's it's a crap hole. Moving on from a caller that won't call in. Yeah, Antarctica's a crap hole too. It's just a frozen one. And and I think most of the people that live on Antarctica are white. Does that make me racist against it has white people? Penguins though. It does have penguins, which yeah, are like white and really black. Cute penguins. But anyway, so I was reading this article about a feminist, and she's like, that it, it's kind of a misleading article. It talks about how feminists will ruin your life, and. And she's agreeing with it because, you know, once she became aware of herself as a woman, um, she doesn't read any books by men anymore. She doesn't watch movies that are produced or directed by men, which I was like, doesn't that kind of limit you for a lot of growth and learning if you're not? Anyway, so, and how when, I let me see if I could read it because it's actually... I was like, that's taking it to a new... It's like how vegans won't eat plants unless they've actually fallen from the tree because to pluck them is to kill them. It's like that form of extremism um, and feminism. She says... Where is it? You could fill in. Okay. She goes on to say... So, friends, family, partners, you can lose them all thanks to feminism. Once you start demonstrating to your brothers or fathers that you will not be picking up after them or cooking them any more dinners while they watch the match or calling out that creepy uncle on his inappropriate butt slaps or arguing about reproductive rights with your grandmother, it is highly likely that you will be, and which, of course, we, if someone's butt slapping you or being creepy, call them out. Don't, you know, let that crap slide. No one ever butt slaps me. I do, too. Oh, that's true. You do. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I'm a feminist. (laughs) It is highly likely that you will be henceforth uninvited from Sunday lunch. With male friends, once you stop deferring to their male ego, because we know that all males have an ego, refuse to laugh at their offensive jokes. I would hate to have a life where I could not laugh at any joke anymore because it is either... If you didn't laugh at my offensive jokes, you'd never laugh. I don't laugh at a lot of your jokes, though. That's true. My threshold was met like five years ago. Because I'm not very ago. funny. You think you're funny. It's your ego that gets in the way. Okay. Challenge them on their mansplaining or explain for the 50th time why not all men, hashtag, just serves to derail women's issues. They might feel too triggered by your repeated insistence that the patriarchy is the root of all evil and simply cut you out of their life rather than deal with your constant attacks to their masculinity. Is that really the life of a feminist, is that they have to attack all men for their masculinity and their ego and their life of the patriarchy? The life of the left and the life of a feminist is solely focused on how can I be offended today? Are we in a pattern? Like, are we existing in the patriarchy and we don't even know it? Is that what our marriage is? (laughs) Down with the patriarchy. Like, I'm legit worried. You should be. <laughs> All right, we're going to we're going to start wrapping this up here, but if you've got a last comment. Oh wait, can I finish? 866-895-6442. Yes, you can finish. There's <gasps> What happened? No. This Hold on. Podcast, okay. So- as for your gal pals, there are no safe bets here either. After a couple of rants, meaning that annoying friend that doesn't shut up, like about gun rights or something like CJ, about how monogamy is a social construct, heteronormativity, heteronormativity is oppressive, and the institution of marriage, the ultimate trick the patriarchy has designed to trap women in unequal and economically disadvantaged power relations, the invites to hen nights in Galway and weddings in Wicklow will probably start to dry up. When it comes to boyfriends, Forget it. Romance is a trap and marriage is the nail in the coffin. In heterosexual relationships, you can expect to live a life of torturous contradictions, orgasm inequality. Orgasm inequality. Wait a minute. That's what she says. You just got my you just got my uh my haunches up there. What is what is orgasm inequality? I guess do you want me like can I say it? You can say whatever you want. I we're guess on a, we're on a podcast okay. here. So when the guy comes all every time and the girl doesn't. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's because it's very easy for a man. You you know how much work it is to get? I do. I saw the funniest thing. Shut up. <laughs> okay. This is this is this describes the life of a liberal 
Okay, let me let me read something to you, if it's still up, because this this is how offended liberals get, and probably feminists too. Okay, if it's still there, because oh, it was the funniest insult, and I. So while you're looking that yes. up, because I've got this, you reminded me of this funny <laughs> clip that we played today. This, this was Bernie Sanders. He gave like a 45 minute dissertation on the glory of socialism. And this just cracks me up when he's trying to say apocalyptic. The powerful corporate interests whose greed is destroying the social and economic fabric oh. of our country. Hang on, that's not it. All the right. only way Let me try this again. we achieve these by having the courage to take on the powerful corporate interests no, that's not it. and reclaim our democracy. Dang it. Okay, I guess I I thought it was that clip, but I, I have to find it. Is that if there was ever a moment in the history of our country where despair was not an option. Despair was not an option. Oh, maybe this was it here. Oh, this is it right here. Yeah. Are on the march, pushing us to make the apocalyptically wrong choice. There it is. Pushing right. us. Listen to him try to say apocalyptic. He he's got. I can understand people when they talk. You know, sometimes they mess up words just as they're speaking. But when you're reading the word, this just cracks me up. It's just so funny. To make the apocalyptically wrong, the apocalyptically wrong choice. The apocalyptically wrong choice. I don't even know what that apocalyptic. Anyway, sorry. I, I don't. When you were miss, when you were trying to pronounce that word, it just reminds me of that. It was so funny. Okay, Are you ready for this one? Yes. Okay, the clitoris contains eight thousand sensitive nerve endings, and it still isn't as sensitive as feminists are. <laughs> <laughs> that, wow. Thank you. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that that is so true we could probably end on that quote we could since nobody else is calling it all right well thanks for joining us on this discussion with uh upa upa laka yeah yeah let's hear that one more time before we, we close <laughs> because i'm telling you that's that's just the best the 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 best of bernie sanders right here the apocalyptically wrong choice is bernie sanders all right well Folks, take care. Be safe. Be free. Let me know if you kind of like these little uh, discussions with the wife. We might do more of these. And just let me know if you guys surprise your wives when you go and have some fun with them and you tell them how many nerve endings are in their clitoris now. Yeah. And I, I want to know what the looks on their faces are. <laughs> All right. What was that quote one more time? And that's what we're going to end on. But <laughs> okay. but let it let me know if uh, let us know in the comments if if you think these are kind of funny, if uh, if you think that these are fun to have that I bring Emily on and we do every now and then a little husband wife podcast about something that we can make fun of each other on. Um, Jason says his wife is loving this chat. Can you please stop it? She's talking too much. <laughs> oh, I thought you said I was talking no, too no, much. No, I was no, like, no. what? That's so mean. No, I guess, I guess she's, I guess <laughs> she's in his ear. Okay. So, so you want that quote? All right, here, here's the quote. Okay. And then you guys take care, be safe and be free. We're going to, we're going to end it with, this quote on feminists. Okay. The clitoris contains 8,000 sensitive nerve endings, and it still is not as sensitive as a feminist. There you have it, folks. Take care. We'll talk to you all later.